Hello and welcome back to my channel, The Engineering Experience. In today's video, I'm going through Art of Electronics exercise 1.4. And in this exercise, we need to design a scratch filter for audio signals where the 3dB point is set at 10 kHz. We're using the same source and load impedance that was described in exercise 1.39. And just to recall on that, the exercise 1.39 set the source impedance as 0 ohms which is basically telling us that it is a perfect source and the load impedance was 10 kilo ohms. So the load impedance is the resistor connected to the output of the RC filter. So let's firstly talk about what I think the book means by a scratch filter. I think it's talking about those high frequency scratching sounds that you get, you know, the annoying ones on the blackboards that you used to have. So a low pass filter would reduce or attenuate the signal level for the high frequency scratching sounds. We are setting the cutoff frequency to 10 kHz as defined in the question. So quickly going over the response of a low pass RC filter, you have a pass band, which is basically over here. So that would be your zero dB point. And then you have a cutoff frequency point, which is at minus three dBs. And this is the roll off rate down here. And this is basically your stop band. In a non-ideal filter, you also have a transition band, which is kind of what I've shown here. An ideal filter would be a sharp drop off over here, going to full attenuation at the cutoff frequency. But obviously, a real filter doesn't do that. So let's now talk about the known parameters. The cutoff frequency is 10 kilohertz. The source impedance is 0 ohms. The load impedance is 10 kilo ohms. Just to recall our memory, we used the same recommendation in the last exercise as well. Out of Electronics book recommends that our resistance should be a tenth of the load resistance. So obviously our load impedance in this case is 10 kilo ohms. Our source resistance of the RC filter should be a tenth of that so that we are not affecting the output too much. So from the known parameters and obviously our understanding of low pass filters, we can draw the circuit for this setup as for the following. So we have a voltage source. I've set this as one micro ohm, but it's just to show you a source impedance on this circuit here. Obviously in the circuit is zero ohms, but I can't set that value in LT spice. But then we have a series resistive component and a parallel capacitive component. And this is our load resistance over here. So as recommended by the book, we're going to set the resistance value to one kilo ohm, which is obviously a tenth of this load impedance over here. We don't need to worry about the source side as we have a perfect source with zero ohm impedance. The cutoff frequency for a low pass filter can be calculated using the following equation, which is basically one over two pi RC. Obviously we have fixed our R and we know the cutoff frequency is 10 kilohertz. Rearranging the equation to get C by itself, we can rewrite the equation as C is equal to one over two pi times one kilo ohm times 10 kilohertz which gives us a capacitance of 15.915 nanofarads. So we can finally fill in the two unknown components in the circuit. So the resistance is one kilo ohm and the capacitance is 15.915 nanofarads. We worked out all the components that we need for the low pass filter, but I'm just going to show you how I went about calculating them. So first of all, I almost always use Excel for this kind of thing. It's just because it's handy to me, but obviously you can use a calculator. So if you've got R as 1000 ohms, our FC is 10,000 kilohertz, and our 3 dB point, so F 3 dB is equal to 1 over 2 times pi times R times C. Now rearranging this equation to get C, we get equals one over two times pi times R times FC, which is the cutoff frequency. Now if I press enter in this, obviously this gives me a value in the scientific notation. So this has given me a value of 1.59 times 10 to the minus eight. Obviously, if I want to make that a little bit easier to read, I can multiply this value by 1 billion. So 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. And that gives me a value of 15.91549 nanofarads. So I can plug in these values into LT spice to see if I'm getting the right response. 
But another thing I like to do is confirm that my equation is accurate and that I've you know rearranged this accurately is rerun the original equation. So two times pi times r times c. And that should give me a value of 10 kilohertz. Obviously this equation is quite simple. But if you're doing something a little bit more complicated, then it's always a good idea to check again that you've converted the equation accurately. So let's plug this into LT Spice now and see what happens. So I've got a one kilo ohm resistor and a 15.915 nanofarad capacitor. So if I press play on this, you can see that the circuit is simulating. I am running an AC analysis with a um, linear setting, 10,000 points and a stop frequency of 20 kilohertz. On the scale, I've got dBs, but you can change that to um, other parameters if you want, just by right clicking on this. Over here, we have the measurements on this cursor. Now, if I drag this to 3 dB point, you can see it's quite close to 10 kilohertz, but it's not really there. So you can see it's at nine kilohertz. And right at the beginning, you can see that it's not zero dBs as well. So this is because of this value resistor over here. If I change this to a linear setting, you can see that the signal is attenuating some of the DC as well. And that is because obviously this, this capacitor looks like almost infinite resistance at DC. So what you have is basically this resistor in series with this resistor. So you have a potential divider formed by these. Obviously this value is one kilo ohm, so it's quite significant when you look at the load impedance of 10 kilo ohms. So the DC value is 910 millivolts. In order to get a better response for the passband, what you can do is change the value of this resistor and make it significantly smaller than this resistor over here. Obviously in this case, I've got one kilo ohm there. If I was to change that to, let's say 100 ohms, then that changes my capacitor to 159.1549 nanofarads. So if I input those two values, 100 ohms here and 159.1549 nanofarads. And if I was to press simulate on this, you can see now that the linear response, which is what's being displayed over here, is a lot closer to the one volt input signal. Again, it's still a potential divider with the source resistance value of 100 ohms and our load impedance obviously is 10 kilo ohms. But because this value is significantly smaller than this, we are passing a lot more of the DC signal through to our load. Now, if you look at the cutoff frequency, at the 3 dB point. So I need to change this to dB and find the 3 dB point, which is approximately here. You can see that the cutoff frequency is a lot closer to the 10 kilohertz as well. Obviously we can go smaller and smaller on this. The compromise you have is that you start affecting the source as well. Obviously in this case, we have a perfect source impedance but let's say the source impedance was 10, then obviously this resistor is starting to get closer and closer to this value, and then we're gonna get attenuation that way. That is all I have to share with you today. Thank you for watching today. Hopefully you found this exercise useful. Please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you need the solutions for any other exercises from Out of Electronics, please check out my channel for more videos. Bye for now.